day everyone, welcome back to Steve's Place Down Under. Today we're going to try and start this Komatsu PC220-3. So we'll see if she goes. So this has sat here for about, I think about six years since we've used it. Um, last time we used it, it had a problem. It didn't have any power to the tracks now. I've eliminated the swivel joint in the middle. I've, I've resealed that. Um, sometimes they can lose it through those seals and not get it to, the, to your track motors, but I've eliminated that because it had a leak. So I know that's right. So it's, it's either your walk and levers aren't stroking the pump or uh, it's, it's the track motors themselves because the boom, the stick, the bucket, the swing all works fine. So, and they're the same pumps that, that make it walk. Um, it's got a Mitsubishi turbo diesel in it. Like I said, it's basically like a truck engine. Um, the model I don't know, I, I, I can't remember it. I haven't had the bonnet up yet, but <clears throat> the reason we're moving it, I've got to move all the trucks uh, onto this side of the road and this, this excavator will be put, um, turned around just basically straight behind where it's going now. So it's 24 volt. Um, we're gonna, Dad's around the other side, putting the batteries in it now. We'll see if she goes, it, it should go. Um, Fuel, fuel level's a bit lower than the engine, it may have run back, but we'll see what happens. Uh, this particular one I bought in a, a package deal. Um, I got a twin steer uh, Kenworth, an eight wheeler Kenworth, slimline cab over with a 400 big cam Cummins in it. And I got a 22 ton Komatsu excavator for $5,000. Now, that's incredible buying because the truck's probably worth 30 grand now that it's going. Um, it, needed a, it needed a rebuild, but I spent about two and a half thousand on a uh, in a stake McB kit, which is which is good quality Cummins parts, and, and now she goes good. It's it's it is registered, but she she's only appeared on here once, I think. So I come home from a Christmas party about seven years ago. I've probably had it seven or eight years ago, and here she is sitting in front of the shed in all the glory, the Kenworth, and then the um, the Komatsu was sitting down at the back gate, all for five thousand dollars. That's including a tow truck and a float, and two pieces of equipment. Now it, it was worth more than that in scrap value, so I was I was wrapped. As I said, plenty of power. We sat a 40 foot container at full reach, empty obviously, um, into place with it. And we've dug a lot, dug a lot with it. Once it's sitting in one spot, it's it's good. So if anyone off the top of their head knows what may be wrong with it, has worked on these old Dash 3s, um, be sure to give me a ring or email me or let me know. But I haven't yet looked at it. I haven't got a manual on it. I, I, I can download one offline, no problem. I'd have to bring some gauges home because I don't own my own set. Um, haven't really looked into it. The tracks, the walking gears all had it, but it should have power. I think if you pull one of the boom or the stick levers, it starts walking properly. Now to me, that's stroking the pump um, through those other levers. So it, it, that, that's all it might be. So let's see if she goes. So we'll just get up here. Hopefully it's got enough fuel in it. It's hard buying fuel for these big tanks. You put about 40 bucks, 50 bucks in it just to move it and it doesn't even wet the bottom of these bigger tanks. But, um, she's had a few aftermarket options added to her, including that exhaust pipe and that air cleaner. There she is, the mighty Mitsubishi. Doesn't get hot, doesn't use oil. Um, may leak oil but doesn't use it uh, we've, we've used it for hours on end digging around tree stumps and, and loading trucks and we dug the dam with her we'll clean the dam out with her use it for a crane in a few jobs yeah just wait needs water needs water yeah Look at that, she's right on. Right on. Might be the water in there, I don't know. Put some water in her and we'll uh, kick her up. I'm just worried about, like that old crane over there, that the hoses are going to start blowing on it. She's bloody awfully slippery up here with the, all the moss on her and the leaves and. Try and 
turn the drum over. Last time it did blow a hose, didn't it? There's a couple up in here that aren't real good. I'm sure I fixed it, but I think it did. And when there's a machine to be driven and Dad's about, he's in a... Yeah. There's no, no chance of me getting on the louvers. You know why that is? Stephen can't drive any. Uh, okay. He's bloody hopeless. He can work a camera, that's about it. Just ignore the nonsense. Okay, so I don't know, seven years, or so roughly between six and seven years, we'll see if she goes. A mighty Mitsubishi. Even that battery won't blow off. Well, I don't know, they're tight. Pull it back a bit more. Seems like idle. It's, she's hunting like it's in idle. Listen to that. Yeah, beauty one of the best sounding things on the place between that and that old G89 Volvo next to that 1924 Mercedes. I've got about, I don't know, 12 Detroit diesels here and I reckon, I don't know, these, these nearly outdo it. Now I've got a five cylinder Nissan diesel over there too. It sounds fantastic, but GC sounds good. Straight through on this one, there's no muffler on it. The muffler was too high so we so we took it off, it was just flexing, there's only the pipe holding it. seized up like I said with all the clutches and starters and all this wet weather been having even the cables on this now look like they're seized. Tracks might be seized on it. I've got no track power. Well, she just blew a hose. That's just is gonna send me broke doing this. <laughs> it's about 400 bucks. problem with these old things, they blow all these hoses in this wet weather and then they're going to go 14 to pull it back? No, it won't roll now. Skid. Okay, so we're back at the Komatsu PC220. Um, I've got, got a hose made but I'm a bit weary of trying to move it again in case it blows another one. I did get two just in case but there's obviously another problem so I've, had, I've got on a Komatsu technical support um, through the week and they because I, I didn't have any information on this thing and it works very similar to a later model excavator but also different so it's struggling to drive and, and admittedly a lot of the rollers are worn out um, it's done it ever since I've had it so but it should still do something so in that in that motor there the final drives okay because I've done the 
there's like a dog bone drive in there from the motor to the to planetary set and it's so I've had that apart and it was okay so it's not those locking up in that motor there there's a set of brake discs wet discs clutch discs which is the parking brake for not only stopping the machine rolling but when you're digging too it doesn't pull it along so that's got a piston on it with two seals now whether that's those seals are blown out there could could be something else happened in the machine that debris gone through and worn those seals out um, it could be there's a counterbalance valve in there which prevents the machine over running when it's going downhill so it may be stuck and as it moves as you put apply pressure to either direction it'll it moves and uncovers the port which then fills the brake oil and releases that piston there is a restriction that stops the oil going back to the tank um, something may be wrong there and just letting the oil go straight through the brake piston and not release it I don't know so if we can just get it moved so we can do the job on the ground it's sitting on um, I might just slip that motor out and put it on the bench up in the workshop and have a look at it there could be a seal blown in there there could be uh, a number of things so and there's two safety valves as well if they if they're failed it'll it, it'll do it the safety valves are just like a uh, relief valve so when you let your levers go the weight of the machine just it, it, that that motor then becomes a pump um, because it's working reverse then so that that just that prevents it hydraulic lock it'll just it'll just relieve and bring the machine to a nice it'll still stop quick but without going bang I guess so if those are failed um, because what they also do is that oil pressure coming in will, will build up hit those and hit one of those and then build up enough pressure to push your counterbalance valve down so I don't think any of that's happening I have had gauges on it many years ago and I think it was within a couple hundred psi of spec um, with the travel lever forward it was it was up to spec and the track wasn't moving that was just with the weight of machine on the ground if you lift it up with the with the boom or the stick it'll 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 spin but still slowly so I've done the swivel seals um, just chasing this problem not that they were leaking but that one was a bit funny but yeah for the price of it and the, and the easy job that it was I've done those so that's eliminated so it has to be here um, unless it's not letting it back to the control valve but when that hose blew it it went a long way so there's, there's pressure there plus it was trying to dead end and that's another reason it probably did blow so if that was freewheeling it it really had no reason to blow um, unless it was completely completely rooted so I'm going to put the hose back on it put some oil in it and fire it up and I did notice <coughs> when it was parked I was down here having a malt sandwich yesterday afternoon having a having a look at it and the, and the tracks actually come off the rollers there so she's rubbing on a few of the caps so I'll have to swing the bucket out this way lift her up and rotate it it should just swing back down onto it I have done the track adjuster seals in this and I'll put a new idler on it here there's a wombat hole here look look how much dirt he's dug out that's all fresh I haven't seen him but it's obviously there um, I'll put a new idler on this you can get parts for these very cheap I think even even off Alibaba or Amazon or something you can get the get the track rollers for it very cheap I think I only paid a couple hundred for that idler with the spring and everything um, probably not great quality but certainly certainly not going to fail on this thing so I'll fit the hose it's up in here from the swivel joint to the um, there's a steel pipe coming off the control valve you can probably see through there so I won't film that it's a bit hard quickly put that on we'll tip some oil in and fire it back up I've only just got to move it backwards a bit if we can just even use the bucket or just something to help it um, then I'll pop one of their motors off we might do it whether it's today or not but do it on the back of the ute here or up on the workshop bench we'll just see if there's any brake seals blown out but why it's doing it on both tracks I don't know whether they're both blown out um, that's a bit of a coincidence when you play with earth movers they're not linked um, the brake circuit's not there is a straight travel valve but that's not what we're experiencing here um, it's, it's a different problem so 
whether, they, as I said, whether something's failed in the system and the, the brass or the metal or debris has gone through it, I don't know. I haven't cleaned the tank strainer, I haven't looked that far, I just haven't really looked at it at all. We've usually just got it to the job, done the job, and then, and then we've uh, just parked it, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've got the hose on, put 20 litres of slippery in it because it, it lost a fair bit. Whether it's enough, I don't know, probably not, but it should be able to get it moved. Um, try and start it now, let it warm up. I've checked the engine over, she's still full of water and plenty of oil because it didn't run long enough last week, so you're probably wondering why I'm wearing a white shirt. Yes, it does get dirty, but I'm just trying to promote them. Um, since fixing the Albion, wearing it last week, that's what the stains are from, uh, probably sold four of them, two here in Australia and two went to the US, so, which is great. So, again, if you, if you got a date book with that someone special this is exactly what you need get your orders in so we'll see if she starts now um, let it warm up and then we'll, we'll probably swing it around get that other track back on I'll have to move the vehicle um, and then see what she does probably hear that background noise apart from all the cicadas and birds there's a, there's a bloke flying, flying like an ultralight thing around with a oh it's a little helicopter or one with a parachute on top I'm not sure that's what the noise is anyway enough oil in it. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to go and chase some of that up. Okay. My children have decided to come down and play on that one. Well two of my children anyway, there's one missing. And uh should be safe on there while we try this one again. I just put another 60 litres in her. We'll fire it up and see what it does now.
power run. You can see the effort it is to move the thing. It's, um, it's got no track power at all. You sort of got to use the bucket and then one will spin a bit quicker than the other. So could be pump pressure as well, but all the all the other functions seem to be okay. I mean, they're not brilliant, but they're, they're good. They've got plenty of digging power. So um, I may move it off camera a bit more later on. At the moment, it's out of the way. So I'll leave that episode here. If I'm going to do anything to the track motors, I'll um, that'll be a separate episode so just so this one's not too long thanks patreon members thanks for everyone that watches and buys and subscribes and um we'll see you on the next one